Hey guys, welcome back to Simply A Better You. Today I will be taking you on a journey through what we eat in a day. Now I've already done my grocery shopping for the week. As you can see here, I've got a few items just to add to what we already have. But I like to start by using the items I already have in my kitchen, getting those things used up. Like you see here, I have an end piece to some homemade bread left over, and I'm gonna go ahead and chop this up, and I should have just enough to make like a, a French toast casserole. That's the, the idea here. Um, sometimes what we eat in a day is me being creative by looking in my fridge, seeing what I have. I have some eggs here. I have, you know, milk. I have cinnamon. I have sugar. And I have this little bit of bread left over. So we're going to go ahead and make a breakfast out of it. So I've got about four eggs here. And I'm going to go ahead and scramble these up. I'm going to add about a cup of milk, some cinnamon, some sugar. And we're going to call that breakfast. I'm also going to add a little bit of um, vanilla extract because that makes everything better. So I'm taking the bread cubes that I've chopped up and just kind of placing them in the egg mixture. I'm going to kind of mix them around to get them coated. And then I'm going to set it off to the side in the fridge and just kind of let it soak up all the egginess before I pop it in the oven. And while I'm waiting for that to soak up all the good egginess, I'm going to work on my breakfast because this is for the girls. So I'm going to go ahead and start in on my breakfast. My breakfasts look a little different than what I would make for everybody else. Um, I am trying to stay away from breads, carbs, um, sugar, and things like that. So I'm trying to stay uh, very lean, high in protein, and lots of good fresh vegetables. So these are kind of like a pepper breakfast bowl, and they don't take a lot to make you know you pull out whatever vegetables that you would probably eat in an omelet chop those up you can scramble your eggs before you put it in the pepper i just crack my eggs in the pepper and just let it cook like that and just stick all the toppings and stuff on top that works for me i'm using some leftover bacon from um yesterday morning and I'm gonna add those on top, and then I'm gonna cook up some salmon to have with it. And this is just a simple throw together breakfast for me. You can even make these ahead of time if you want and just leave them to sit in the fridge and crack your egg over top of it in the morning if you like, or um, you can just pre-make it all together and sit it in the fridge overnight. Cover it with some um, plastic wrap or whatever you have, and it's good to go. To throw in in the morning. Now, some of you might be thinking salmon for breakfast, but it's actually really good. Um, breakfast doesn't always consist of syrup, egg, sausage, bacon, something smothered and covered in cheese, though, let me tell you, that does taste pretty good. Um, it can be all sorts of things. I have been known to eat steamed broccoli and cauliflower for breakfast. 
So I'm, I'm just kind of going with it. I like um, coconut aminos, some garlic and onions on my salmon. Um, it also goes well with like a ground mustard. And I wrap it up in some parchment paper. And whether I'm putting that in my um, oven or I have like a little toaster oven that I can also pop it in, it cooks up really quick and it always stays moist. So I've added my, um, this is actually goat cheese on top of these. I thought I had feta, but this is goat cheese. And we're gonna pop all of this into the oven at the exact same time. It's all gonna cook together. And no, the casserole is not going to taste like salmon. <laughs> so I've got my salmon in, but I'm gonna go ahead and sprinkle a little bit of brown sugar and cinnamon on top of this almost French toast casserole and get it ready to go in the oven. About 20, 25 minutes will probably do. Um, I just kind of waited until the egg set up and it looked crispy on top and pulled it out. I am going to serve this, of course, with some maple syrup on top. The peppers came out done. The egg is completely cooked through. Salmon is ready to go. I'm going to add a little bit more of those coconut aminos. So this next thing was a last minute decision. Joe has been working extra hard, long hours, and we have forever had this banana cake mix in the fridge. So I have got some bananas that are really ripe, and I'm going to go ahead and mix up this store-bought cake mix and um, make him this banana cake. The only thing that I'm going to do to kick this up a notch is I'm actually going to add the fresh bananas to it and I am also going to make a homemade banana cream cheese frosting. So I'm buttering my pans. I always save the wrapping to my butter so that I can use it to grease my pans, muffin tins. Um, even if I'm gonna like bake a casserole in my cast iron dish, I can run the, um, the paper wrappers in the inside of it. And I mean, it just, it saves money. It's frugal. We'll just, yeah, it's frugal. So I don't have a recipe for this banana cream cheese frosting. This is just something I thought I would throw together. I know how to make cream cheese frosting, so you can use like that kind of recipe. It's about three to four cups of um, powdered sugar. And then of course you could add your two sticks of butter or a package of cream cheese. Uh, this was really thick, so you can definitely add some milk to thin it out. And this is just part of what is, you know, cooking from scratch or just cooking at home. You begin to figure things out. You test things and, you know, really you can't mess up frosting. <laughs> but um, this particular cake had a banana pudding filling. So that's what that yellow filling is in the middle. So I'm going to go ahead and it's going to be a pretty light layer of frosting. I know this is going to look like a, a lot and it is pretty rich, but I'm not going to completely cover this really thick. You'll probably still be able to see some of the cake kind of peekaboo through. Also, if you guys don't have a cake dish or a cake pan, you can take your um, cake pans that you baked the uh, cake itself in and just turn it upside down. Um, you can also do this with a cutting board and just cover it with some foil. And you can also turn over a bowl, like a regular bowl that you would eat cereal or something out of, and place a dinner plate on top of that and it kind of gives you a makeshift 
you know, cake stand, make it a little easier to frosting so that you can um, turn the cake. So the cake came out super cute. I put it in the fridge to kind of let that frosting sit up a little bit. And we are going to go ahead and cut it. Joe, of course, is getting the first piece. It did come out very pretty, and um, Joe agrees that it tasted phenomenal. The cake lasted about two days in our house. Next, I am whipping up some lunch for the girls. So lunches here look a little bit different probably than than it may look for you guys. Um, our lunches almost resemble like a dinner. So we'll do things like I'll make a roast chicken. Here I'm making um, sloppy joes. A lot of people eat that for, for dinner. And this is actually perfect because it's quick. It's super easy. And we will actually have leftovers that I can send to work with Joe for the next day. Or we will eat leftovers for lunch the next day. So I can get at least two meals out of this. Or... A meal and leftovers for Joe, which also helps us save on money. Now, um, I have not bought Sloppy Joe Mix in almost three, maybe four years. I found a recipe that was like homemade Sloppy Joe. And you can either use tomato paste, which I'm currently out of, or you can use ketchup and it's like it's ketchup tomato paste um a little bit of worcestershire sauce <laughs> i've never been able to say it um mustard i'm using coconut sugar here because i'm going to eat this um or you can use brown sugar the, re the original recipe called for brown sugar but um you can substitute coconut sugar in any place where it's using you know just white sugar um your raw cane sugar brown sugar coconut sugar is is really awesome and it's low on the glycemic level if you are somebody who struggles with diabetes you just add a little bit of water i wouldn't say more than a cup of water i usually just put in a little mix it up and see if i need some more but it is super quick and easy this is done just that fast and that's lunch i'm having mine over top of a sweet potato <laughs> for dinner we are doing um beef and broccoli i had some um, leftover broccoli that i'm going to go ahead and chop up i've got some shallots and garlic and this is actually a porterhouse steak and i'm going to go ahead and chop that up saute it in a pan this is something we do quite often it comes together really quick and it's your choice on what kind of seasonings you would like to have um, you can do something like a teriyaki um, sauce of some kind. I am actually going to do a butter garlic sauce for this. So you're going to see me put a whole lot of butter in this and a whole lot of garlic, but it is super yummy. After sauteing all of the beef, um, I put my broccoli in there 
and we're going to let that cook for a little bit add a little bit of water put a lid on it and allow it to to steam a little bit i'm adding a little bit more of avocado oil so that my broccoli doesn't burn but it cooks down really fast so if you don't want soggy broccoli you got to keep an eye on this also if you have some type of broth left over in the fridge like i had some extra chicken broth that always tastes better than water okay now after you cut that steak up don't throw away the trimmings the fat or the bone put it in a plastic bag and pop it in the freezer because this becomes bone broth later okay Yes, that is a whole stick of butter. And while that is melting, I'm going to throw in my garlic in my shallots. And we're not cooking these until they're brown. You just want to cook these until they become fragrant. And then you're going to add your meat and your broccoli and everything back in. You do not want to burn your garlic. Also in the back here in this pan, I have um, some noodles going for the girls. And I will serve theirs over top of noodles. We have my um, my daughter's, my oldest daughter's wedding coming up, so I'm being a little conscientious with the carb intake. I've put a lot of my weight back on, and I need to make sure that I fit in my dress for the wedding. <laughs> So I had a little bit of fettuccine sauce left over from um, a pizza that I made for the girls. And this is store-bought fettuccine sauce. I am going to go ahead and put this alongside of that. And then I myself, I just serve it up as it is, the, um, the steak and broccoli, and I'm content. And there you have it, guys. What we eat in a day. The girls were happy. No complaints. So, friends, thank you for joining us on our journeys today. And I bless you on yours.